All right, so now that we have our impressions taken, we're gonna go ahead and pour them up in the stone, just like we did the rubber molds. So we will take our pre-measured stone here. We're gonna put that in the bowl. And our pre-measured water. And we'll go ahead and slowly incorporate those two together. Make sure that all the powder at the bottom of the bowl is mixed well. Lots of air bubbles, so you want to make sure you're really mixing thoroughly. You don't want to have those air bubbles in your pour-up. It can cause a lot of voids in the um, stone mold. So now that that's mixed, we're going to turn on the vibrator here. Again, push down nice and firm. That'll help those air bubbles rise to the surface. upper one and you're going to hold it by the handle again take a small increment of the stone start in the very back in the floor. and again you're just going to guide the stone into each of the teeth all the way around nice and slow and add a little extra that way you know that each tooth is covered and there's not going to be any bubbles in the same corner, do the same pattern. If you see air bubbles, you can just pop those with your spatula here. Another increment, we're going to do that same thing until it's mostly full all the way up to the edge of the impression. And then you can turn off the vibrator here. We're going to set this on our tile, and you can see we still have quite a bit of stone in the bowl. It's still a little runny, so what you might want to do is let it set, if you need to, for a minute or two, and then we're going to stack the rest of the stone on top of that so we can have a nice base. Okay, so this is set for a couple minutes here, so it's a little bit thicker. Um, the reason is because once you start stacking your excess material, if it's too runny, it's just going to fall off the back of your impression, and it won't be able to stack to give you your base. So now that it's a little bit thicker and it's set, you're just gonna dollop your excess material right in the center. And then we're gonna smooth it out so it's even all the way around. So I just kind of push it to the back just lightly. The more you mess with it with your spatula, it's gonna make it run down the sides. So you just need small increments if you need to add a little extra. We have plenty in the bowl here. The goal is to get at least one inch of a base, so that's why. And you want it to be nice and flat. You don't want a big inverted um, base. You want to keep it nice and flat, parallel with your tile or the counter. Take the last of it here. And make sure in the posterior you have the um, very back teeth covered you're not missing those and then you can kind of take your spatula and smooth that out again make sure it's nice and flat not um, uneven or too um, lumpy so there we go we'll let that set for about 45 the minutes to layer the lower impression so we have it nice and mixed up we're gonna set it on here just to make sure there's no air bubbles before we put it in the impression all right so you're gonna take your impression hold it by the handle same idea, take a small increment, start in the very posterior, and we're just going to slowly guide the stone off the lower anterior, Again, you don't want to go too quick because then you can um, introduce air bubbles, so you just want to go nice and slow, and take another increment, same pattern. Okay, if it goes off the back. All right. So we're going to turn this off. Some impressions on the lower, since the tongue is typically here, they won't have um, this alginate that flows between the right and left side. So what you can do is take a wet paper towel and wad it up, and you would actually just place it 
in here. If this was um, the alginate wasn't there, I would place a paper towel. But since it is, it's gonna um, keep that from walking on the tray. So if that happens during an impression, you can take a wet paper towel, place it between um, either side, and then that way your stone won't walk on your tray. So now I'm just gonna fill it up to the top of the impression. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna let it sit before I build up the base. So I'm just gonna set it on my tile. All right, so we've let the stone um, set up a little bit, but still workable. So we're just gonna add it to our impression here to build the base. Again, stack right in the center and then you can um, mold it and form it where you need to, to help guide it to the posterior, make sure it comes all the way back there. <clears throat> you don't want it to be at an angle, so you're gonna smooth that out just a little bit. Again, you don't wanna mess with it too much because then it starts to kind of flow everywhere, so just, just enough to get it um, even, and then you just wanna kinda let it be for the 45 minutes it's got to set. All right, we're gonna go ahead and separate the stone model from the alginate impression we poured up. Sometimes the stone will overflow around the perimeter, so you can take your spatula and just gently um, break off any of those pieces. And then you're gonna hold the handle um, and then just slowly separate that. You don't, again, wanna break any of the teeth. And it, you'll feel it start to give here and then there's your alginate um, impression and then your stone pour up.